Hi, this is David Harper of Monarch Turtle with a quick review of a basic set of risk-adjusted performance measures. This is especially for my FRM candidate customers. After the screencast, I'll upload this spreadsheet if you'd like to take a closer look at the calculations. Each of the five measures that I'm going to look at here are risk-adjusted performance measures, which is a generic category, and you'll see that they are all variations or flavors of this generic form. And that is to say they are measures of some unit of return divided by some measure of risk. So it's return per unit of risk. That's the generic form. So we say they are risk adjusted return measures or risk adjusted performance measures. And now let's look at each of the five. As usual, I need some assumptions in order to do that. I'll assume the riskless rate is 4%. Then I need some assumptions about the total market portfolio. Yesterday we looked at the capital market line and security market line. And we saw that in theory the market portfolio is the portfolio that includes all of the risky assets. And so we need these for three of the five measures, specifically the train or the Jensen's alpha and the information ratio. And so I'm going to continue those assumptions and assume that our total market portfolio has an expected return of 10.4% with a volatility of just over 9%. And then I calculate the excess return because we use excess return a lot, but don't be thrown off by it. very simple. It's just the return over the riskless rate. So in this case, it's the market portfolio's expected return of 10.4 minus our riskless rate is the excess return, 6.4%. Now, I just need some assumptions about the portfolio that I'm going to apply these risk-adjusted performance measures to. I'll assume the portfolio has an expected return of 14% with a standard deviation, or what we also call the volatility. Volatility is synonymous with annualized standard deviation. We'll assume 30%. And now I have an assumption about the portfolio's beta, which is 1.2. covered this a little bit yesterday. Beta is a measure of systematic risk. It's a measure of the sensitivity of the portfolio to the overall market portfolio. And more specifically, it's the covariance between the portfolio and the market portfolio, which is a measure of co-movement, and then just divided by the variance of the market portfolio. So 1.2 indicates sensitivity, which is above 1.0, of the portfolio to the market portfolio, or in other words, systematic risk. Finally, I have a tracking error here. won't go into detail about that, but this is just the volatility or standard deviation, if you like, of the difference between the portfolio's returns and the market returns. If this portfolio exactly tracked the market portfolio, and then th there, there would be no difference here, and this st standard deviation of the difference would be pretty close to zero. So tracking error is some measure of the deviation or dispersion of the portfolio from the market portfolio. So given those three, I have what I need for our basic set of performance measures. And start with here, I want to calculate the portfolio's excess return. And as we saw before, that's just the expected return of 14% minus the riskless rate of 4%. So the portfolio's expect excess return is 10%. And if we, if we just compared that to the market portfolio's excess return, we have a higher return. And the idea with these risk-adjusted performance measures is, well, that's not enough to do that. This excess return, how was it earned, was extra risk incurred to get it. So we risk-adjust the measure. First, the trainor measure. And let me just pull that formula out here because it's really straightforward. Trainer measure is the portfolio's excess return. See how the numerator is that excess return? Expected return of the portfolio minus the risk-free rate divided by the beta of the portfolio. So that ends up being pretty straightforward here. For the trainer, we take that portfolio excess return. That's the numerator. We divide by the beta, in this case, of 1.2. So we're risk-adjusting the excess return, and we get 0.08, or 8%. I'll take that out one more decimal here. We get about 8.3%. And the thing I want to share about the trainer ratio is it's very much based on the capital asset pricing model. 
that we looked at yesterday. If I pull that out, notice here's the here is the capital asset pricing model. It's the excess return of the portfolio is proportional to the portfolio's beta. So if that's the capital asset pricing model, and if you're with me on this formula, notice that all we do here is divide both sides by beta. If we divide the beta here, it cancels out. And on the left-hand side, then what we're going to have is the trainor measure. Okay, so that's the trainor. Let's, the sharp is oh so similar. Here's the formula for the sharp. Notice, same numerator. So both of them are excess return, portfolio minus riskless rate. The difference is what kind of risk we're including. In the sharp measure, it's the volatility. So the key difference here is the trainer is only the systematic risk, and therefore it's appropriate for diversified portfolios. The sharp ratio or sharp measure uses volatility or total risk as the measure of risk, and therefore it's appropriate when our portfolio is not well diversified. And so if I go down here to the actual calculation, then I can take the, for the sharp, I can take the portfolio's excess return and divide by the portfolio volatility. And I'll get uh, 0.33. Okay, so let me then go to the Jensen's Alpha. And this also is based on the capital asset pricing model. I have a bigger formula here, so I'll move it out a little bit. Now, notice the resemblance to the capital asset pricing model. If we look right here, here's the portfolio's beta multiplied by the equity risk premium. And what the capital asset pricing model tells us is that the portfolio's excess return here should be proportional to the beta or equal to this part on the right-hand side. And so what if it's not? Well, any difference here is the alpha. So the alpha here, if this is positive, this is where the portfolio's excess return is outperforming its expectation against the capital asset pricing model, or doing better than we would predict based on its systematic risk or exposure to the total portfolio. So in the Jensen's alpha, we're really solving for the difference here, which can be plus or minus. So if I move that out, and then if we just look at this formula, can't see all of it, but it's a portfolio return minus the risk-free rate. So that's the portfolio's excess return. And then we're subtracting the market, the equity risk premium multiplied by the beta. And so in this case, for the Jensen's Alpha, we get 0.2 or 2.3% indicating our portfolio is outperforming its uh, expected return according to the capital asset pricing model by 2.3%, which is quite significant. And finally, almost done here, we have the information ratio, which is very popular. I'll put that right up here. And notice, this has uh, got in a numerator the expected return of the portfolio minus the expected return on the benchmark. In this case, that's going to be the performance that we expect from the capital asset pricing model. So what we have here in the numerator is that same Jensen's alpha that we just analyzed. So for the information ratio, we have alpha in the numerator, and we divide by that tracking error, the standard deviation or volatility of the difference between portfolio return and benchmark return. But so you can see here again, we've got a measure here of a residual return divided by residual risk. So again, we do have return per unit of risk. We've now just been very specific in defining it as residual return per residual risk. And so if we look here at this calculation, it becomes pretty straightforward after we've done the other work. It's alpha here, the Jensen's alpha, divided by our tracking error of 3%. And we get an information ratio of 0.77, which is uh, r actually quite good. So that's an overview of these basic set of risk-adjusted performance measures. This is David Harper, the Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.